six feet nine, Zdeno Chara is the tallest man ever to play in the National Hockey League. Known to teammates and fans simply as Z, he's been captain of the Boston Bruins, one of the NHL's most storied teams, for nearly a decade. If you don't follow hockey, you may not have heard of Z, but inside the game, he's revered by fellow players and fans in Boston and feared by everyone else. The Hockey News recently put him on his cover as the scariest man in hockey, citing the blazing speed of his slap shot, the brutal hits he puts on opponents, and his sheer size on the ice. With his skates on, he's seven feet tall. He weighs 260 pounds. He's 37 years old and plays more minutes per game than much younger teammates. It's his job to shut down the opposing team's best player in every game and make sure he's very sore when it's over. Jaron Boyle going at it. He doesn't hesitate to fight when he has to, though by now, most players know better than to provoke him. Charles tell him, really? You really want to do that? Chara down the boards, flattens Alexander Steen. He's most famous for dishing out big hits on defense. Oh, what a hit! but he's a very skilled skater as well. What a huge pirouette, and the big man scores! 6-9, and he's a ballerina! His slap shot is feared by goalies. Char the bomb scores! This one literally broke the mask of the Rangers, Henrik Lundqvist. And it hit him right between the eyes. Z's shot is officially the fastest ever. Measured at the NHL's All-Star Skills Competition at nearly 109 miles an hour. Wow. Earning the hockey equivalent of a standing ovation from the best players in the game. That's respect right there, guys. He's widely considered the best defenseman in the NHL, which makes it hard to imagine that as a kid, Zdeno Charo was told he really ought to find a different sport. How many times did someone tell you, you really, you just can't play hockey, you're just too tall? Too many times, too many times. But the more they were telling me that, the more I wanted to prove them wrong. You fought for it. I fought really hard for it, yes. Oi, oi. Z got his fight from his father, who had been an Olympic Greco-Roman wrestler for the country then known as Czechoslovakia. I was reading about some of the things he did to help you train. Yeah. <laughs> tell me some of your oh favorite things. Oh, I would tell you my not favorite things. Okay. <laughs> Those are the ones you remember, right? Oh, my God. We had uh, a pull-up bar uh, set um, in our garden on a tree. Mm -hmm. And so every time I walked by, I had to do, you know, a certain amount of pull-ups. He was pushing you. He was pushing me. But his youth hockey coaches kept cutting him. You were actually kicked off a youth team when you were 16 years old. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, it is true. Uh, not, uh, not once, but uh, three times. Three times. Three different years, yeah. He was relegated to the B team, towering over his teammates and using hand-me-down equipment. I always loved hockey. I just loved the speed of the game and, and physicality. And so I knew that hockey was the sport. He eventually became good enough to be noticed by NHL scouts. The New York Islanders drafted him the 56th overall pick of the 1996 draft. He was a project. That's how you look at him. He's Z's current boss, Boston Bruins general manager Peter Shirelli, has followed his career from the beginning. He was Bambi. He was gawky. He was, his limbs are all over the place. You could see, they could see the try in him, but you could also see, wow, is this, I don't know if this guy's going to come around, but you could see the try. When you talk about the try in him, explain what you mean. <laughs> The real elite athletes, their determination, they're wanting to win every battle, they're, they compete at every level, at, at, at every minute, every second, and there's not very many that have that, and he's one of them. Z's try is evident in his physique and his fitness. At the beginning of training camp each year, the Bruins put all their players through a battery of tests. It's no surprise that Z wins the vertical jump. Come on, Z, what do you say, Ken? but just watch him attack the Bruins' version of that backyard pull-up bar. He needs to be the best at it, and it pushes other players. He's got that much more to pull up, you know, one with the length of his arms and his, and his weight, and he, 
and he, he tops the group every year, and it's an impressive feat to watch. You crushed it again this year, right? Oh, yeah, I tried. How many pull-ups did you have this year? Uh, 35. And the nearest guy next to you was what, 31? 33, I think. 33. If he had done 36, would you have done 37? I would try. <laughs> <laughs> He's been trying from the very beginning. He was just 19 when the Islanders sent him straight from the 96 draft to the Prince George Cougars, a junior team in a remote Canadian timber town. He spent the summer working out and taking odd jobs. What were the jobs you had over the summer? I was the, one job was the um, uh, car dealership. I was working uh, 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 car wash. You were working at the car, car wash? wash? They really loved me. Uh, <laughs> I was You're... the best at uh, washing the roofs. Once on the ice in Prince George, Z was appreciated for more than just his height. That's like a league where people really like to kind of get scrappy and fight, and here you are thrown into that. What was that like as a young hockey player? Yeah, I was ready for that. I, 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 I did a lot of training, and obviously my dad prepared me for that. He said, if you ever want to play in North America, you have to be ready to drop your gloves and, and stand up for yourself and defend yourself and your teammates. Like right away, I think my first, I don't know, five, six, seven games, I got scrapped in every, every game, and I had to kind of earn my reputation. Sure. It's the first few punches. He earned it all right in fights like this one against a player named Tony Mohagan of the Seattle Thunderbirds. Mohagan goes down and he is slow to get up. Did people assume just based on the size of you that you were going to be a guy out there fighting all the time? I guess, but I knew that that's not what I wanted to do, or the only thing I wanted to do. I didn't want to be just, just doing the, the fighting. And he hasn't. Chara moves in deep, and he scores! But over his 17-year NHL career, first with the Islanders, then the Ottawa Senators, and for the last nine years as captain of the Bruins, some of his scraps have become legendary. When he was playing for Ottawa, he was fighting Brian McCabe. You know, Brian McCabe's a big guy. He's like maybe 6'3", 220, and, and Z, Z was like, Ragdolling him, he had him like it was like he had a, a doll in his hand. He was throwing him around. It was like he doesn't try and hurt people. It's just that he's big and strong and powerful. There's not a lot of players in his caliber that are tough like him. In deep slot, Recky, Over a 22-year NHL career, Mark Recky played both with Z and against him. He still remembers their one and only fight. We got in a little bit of a tiff, and I tried to punch him, and I, I wasn't even close. And he, he had his glove on, and he popped me. And uh, I saw stars, and I went, oh, just kind of turned around and went the other way. And I was like, that's enough of that one. So, oh, Pat's already is down face first. A powerful hit Char delivered on the Montreal Canadiens' Max Pacioretty in 2011 may be his most infamous. Pacioretty's head hit a stanchion near the team's bench, and he suffered a severe concussion and a broken vertebra in his neck. A scary looking sight on the ice at the Bell Center. While Pacioretty recovered, Z's reputation took a hit. While people might have thought that he purposely drove him into that stanchion, I've seen that play a thousand times, and sometimes players hit the stanchion, sometimes they don't. It just turned out that he did at that time, and and I know Z felt bad about it, but that's the way he plays. The way he plays earned him that scariest man in hockey reputation. That's terrible. <laughs> that's hard to reconcile with the man we met. Off the ice, he's polite and reserved. Okay, watch out the car. He speaks seven languages and has a degree in finance. Does it bother you that people call you the scariest man? Maybe a little bit. Um, because they they have to understand it's um, it's a it's a job you have to do on the ice. It's not like I'm trying to be scary or I'm trying to be mean or kind of get um, get on the cover. I think scary is is a little unfair. 
because he is one of the cleanest players, um, I think, out there for, for how he plays and his size. So why do people find him scary? If he's a clean player, how can well, he be a scary he, player? Because he hits hard, he squeezes, he, he's strong, strong as an ox. Playing against him, what was that like? Miserable. Why? <laughs> Miserable. You know, he would whack you, he would cross-check you, whatever it took to win a game. And, you know, you throw him in his corner, you knew you were going to get crunched. And when your guy plays heavy like that, I mean, there's guys that are good hitters, but he leans on you throughout 60 minutes of a game. And that's just, that's just wears you out. I don't think people truly recognize or realize how impactful he is as a defender. Reach-wise and skating-wise, I think he basically takes care of half of the defensive zone. Half? Like, so, like, on the worst of days, Z skates with a stick that's longer than anyone else's. The NHL had to issue a waiver to allow it. That gives him great reach, but in close quarters, it's hard to handle. Is it easier being that big or is it harder being that big? I think it's harder because a lot of the players are, you know, five, six, seven inches a foot shorter than him. And if we get low, it was, you know, it can be real hard for him. It took Chara establishing himself in the NHL before hockey coaches back in Slovakia finally took notice. The head coach of the national team called me and he said that we would like you to play for national team. So I made the NHL before I made the national team. That was the very first time I actually played for, for my country. And These are the same people who wanted you in the B squad, right? Yeah. yeah. Since then, Z has played on three Slovak Olympic teams and carried the national flag in Sochi. He won the Norris Trophy as the NHL's best defenseman in 2009, and he didn't win the hardest slap shot competition just once, but five times in a row. The Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. In 2011, Chara powered the Bruins to the Stanley Cup. Their first in nearly 40 years. By then, he and Mark Recchi were teammates. You know, it was awesome to see him get that, you know, being the captain. He's holding the cup and then he hands it to you. Tell me about that moment. To get it from him, to see his face was unbelievable. Unbelievable for Boston fans as well, who hadn't seen a cup since Bobby Orr and the team known as the Big Bad Bruins. Why do you think he was able to fit in so well here into what Boston hockey fans expect? Well, uh, ultimately, the Boston hockey fans are knowledgeable and they see how tr truly good a player he is. It's his willingness to compete and they see that um, and, and they really appreciate that. Boston fans also appreciate that Z doesn't act like a $7 million a year sports superstar. Hey, Jim. When the weather's warm, he rides his bike to work at TD Garden. Don't be scared of the cameras. Thank you. Anytime. Then rides the freight elevator with everyone else. Mmm, it doesn't smell bad at all. It smells awesome. <laughs> at Mike's Pastry, a North End institution, he's welcomed behind the counter. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. And in the back room. How are you? Good, how are you? Where the walls are papered not just with his hockey shots, but snapshots of his family, wife Tatiana, and daughter Elise celebrating birthdays. He's a good customer. Elise? No, do yes. this one. No, he's not good. good. She is. He doesn't eat nothing. <laughs> Give me the mini, the mini one. one. Yeah, yeah. With us, he did agree to eat one mini cannoli. Cheers. Cheers. I got the big one. What's wrong with it? Mm. But only to be polite. Oh. You don't really drink, right? No. You don't really have caffeine, right? No. You don't really eat dessert? Sometimes. <sighs> Yeah. Sounds like you're a monk. No, no, no. <laughs> His discipline is impressive. In the off-season, he practically lives in the gym, working out two or three times a day, seven days a week. During the season, he'll play a full game, then work out for another two hours. All that work has made him very durable. Until a knee injury sidelined him for several weeks this fall, Z had never missed more than a few games in any season. You have four years to go in your contract. You'll be 41. Is that going to be it for you at the end of that contract? I hope not. Not a lot of guys play well into their 40s, though. Not a lot, but there, there have been some guys who, who, who were very, very effective in their 40s. And I feel that you always have something to, to prove. He's one of the proudest athletes I've ever met. And I think he loves proving people wrong, uh, which 
he doesn't have to do anymore, but I think that's still in his makeup. Mm -hmm. And he in, enjoys being the underdog, do you feel like? Yeah, which is, which is a little odd. He is a 6'9", <laughs> 260, 4% body fat athlete who's an underdog. So, yeah, let's just let him have that. <laughs> He's not an underdog, but let's let him have that. <laughs> let him think he yeah, is, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>